Good evening. Hi, or good, evening. good afternoon, depending on who's listening. So yeah. I take it you can hear me and the people in the back will no doubt hear me as well. Yes. Um, Great. I've listened well, so now I know where to find the share uh, screen button. Yeah, there it is. I was going to say you are from RTXL, but uh, I think you're going to introduce yourself. Oh, no, I'd love for you to introduce me. <laughs> when, you t when, you st when you start talking about rabbit holes, then that, that I get a bit uh, distracted. So I'm, I'm very in templates and rabbit, hole, rabbit holes. So I think this is going to be a very interesting uh, talk. It's well, prepare to be amazed or disappointed. No, I think I think uh, amazed and uh, uh, um, and your last. It's the last talk of today, and I hope that uh, well, I'll say that I'll say that uh, again after your talk that people stick around in the in the coffee room or in the in the chat. So, um, okay, the floor is yours, uh, yours. Thank you, Alt. Uh... Well, as I said, I'm from RTXL, and as the big logo says, um, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, using templates or overusing templates. Uh, we are also an architecture uh, firm, so I'll talk about the uh, software architecture design uh, principle behind this, which is I cannot really uh, code, so I try to do everything in templates. Uh, also, uh, the templates I'm going to show you are uh, intended for some uh, power users, and those power users can uh, really try at least to uh, do templating themselves. So, uh, especially in the first case I'll show you, uh, which is about uh, one of our customers, uh, the Social Housing Corporations, or rather, uh, a collaboration between uh, the different corporations of the IT people, and they make reference architectures. Uh, for this, they use uh, Archimedes or Smart Connect Archimate, uh, which is uh, a different approach to uh, showing uh, graphical representations on your screen. Uh, my colleague Erwin is the one uh, who created Archimedes, so I won't go into too much detail, but suffice to say, architects use a uh, design uh, tool to create their uh, their models. And uh, with our software, you can import those into your wiki uh, with every view and every item in a view uh, from your model being a separate wiki page. But the issue with that is that the information is kind of technical. So this is the default view. If you click on one of those items from uh, from this view, and uh, it's not really alluring. You can scroll down and see all the uh, details from this view, but we wanted something else. Um, by the way, this is the background. You'll see we just have a parser that is called with all the attributes for that page. There we go. Um, so uh, what I helped them make is a uh, custom view and a framework for custom views on uh, their Archimate uh, models. So what we're going to do is click on uh, one of the processes in their uh, architecture uh, model, uh, which is uh, uh, renting out uh, a unit, or what you would call an apartment or a house. Uh, when you click on that, you don't get all the technical details, but you see another view with all the details about it. Uh, and that's basically uh, what we built. Also, if you click on a data object uh, from uh, one of the architecture views, you get all the details in a custom uh, view with, uh, like you can see, some documentation, attributes, etc. And the way I designed that is the main message I want to get across today. I want to create power user serviceable drugware. Um, those users, they are power users. They know some stuff, 
they know HTML, uh, they know some programming languages, but they've never worked with uh, uh, Semantic Media Wiki. So I try to give them a limited number of functions in every template I make. I try to make this uh, easy as possible for them to learn. And I hide stuff that I don't expect them to learn in templates. So uh, the more difficult stuff uh, is just transformed into uh, calling a template. And because it's that modular, I try to avoid anything but variables. Because if you call the variables on the page once, you can use them in a template that is nested in another template that is nested in another template. Also, I try to make it debuggable. Also, because um, yeah, you have to assume incorrect inputs. I can say uh, uh, you can blame the user that uh, puts incorrect information in their uh, model or in their pages, uh, in their page forms, if you want. Uh, but it's also the templates that can have unexpected uh, uses. So uh, the main tricks I use is putting every template in a class so uh, if i see something that's broken or uh, even worse i come back to a page and i don't know which a template is calling uh, is responsible for what a function in that page i can just right click on the uh, page inspect the source and see uh, through that span and the class that it uh, has uh, which template is responsible for it also I assume the incorrect input will be given. So uh, never trust the input, validate it, and put the errors in a semantic property. Uh, I'll show you that in a, a minute. And also, if I really want to make sure what's happening, I'll just put on top of my uh, um, my template a extra span. And in that span, I say that it should not display that output in uh, the page. But if I inspect the elements again in the code, I can uh, just debug what I uh, have written there. So uh, let me break down uh, step by step what's happening in uh, one of those pages. Archimedes is importing a, an Archimate model, and that creates a page in MediaWiki. Uh, that page has a function called uh, element and the element uh, called smart core, one of our other uh, functions or extensions in MediaWiki, and gives all the parameters in uh, smart core. My custom template puts that into uh, variables, like I said, so you can nest uh, templates and don't worry about uh, what's happening. Also, I find that uh, using var in the code helps the uh, end user, the power user rather, uh, better understand what is happening instead of uh, the three curly brackets. Then I uh, use a template that is basically uh, a selector that uh, looks for a custom template for that subtype. And the example I showed you, there were primary processes or data objects. Well, if it's primary process, then show the uh, template for a primary process. Uh, that template in turn looks for a view and uh, based on uh, the variable view. And if there's a view in uh, your architecture model uh, with that name, it shows it. The other example I've shown you is uh, for a data object. Again, that is imported uh, through Archimedes in an Archimate model. It's again a page. Again, uh, variables are set. This time, the subtype data objects. That subtype data objects is found and then shown. And it looks for a page with uh, the data objects. Um, we do a separate import uh, with all the attributes for a data object. And those are uh, shown in an, a separate page, but embedded in the page uh, with the data object. Also, you see 
uh, some uh, uh, collapsible boxes. Again, modular, so a template, and that template shows the description, versions, links, etc. I uh, said that uh, I tried to get every error message into a semantic uh, 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 attribute or property, rather, and I've given these uh, uh, power users a page where they can see uh, which errors there are in their uh, wiki. So they can just uh, look up uh, which pages have an error and what that error is. So um, the other uh, item, I'm really uh, jumping through his thing, so um, I'll try to slow down. Um, the other item I was going to tell you about is uh, Graphis. And I had this one really simple request uh, because the user in uh, NoahOnline.nl had uh, a graphical visual visualization it was just a simple ask query with Graphis as an output. But they wanted just the tiniest of uh, a change in it. So, uh, try to make the ends of the image. I'll show the image first. Try to make every node in the image clickable or a hyperlink. Well, that was easier said than done. Firstly, uh, they wanted the inverse relations and the normal relations, but there is an issue with some of the media wiki uh, where it doesn't show uh, both simultaneously. That's not an issue if you uh, use your own templates because you can work around it, but if you use uh, the graphics result format, you're kind of stuck with that. So uh, what I did was a workaround and on each template, I uh, double every relationship. So if there's the relation related, I do the inverse related. Uh, so I, I copy that to two related and I show a related and inverse of two related. Uh, then uh, prints out, in my experience, are never hyperlinked. So the relationships uh, can never be a hyperlink unless you're forced to show those pages uh, in your results as well, um, which I've shown you here in this stupid little query. But I don't want the pages that are related to the related uh, pages. So what to do? Well, the decision was easy because a graph is, is tending to be end of life. So I wanted to keep my options open and flexible. And there were a few other items that they'd like changed. Because from this uh, a kind of visualization, they wanted to go to something like this. Uh, the kind of arrows have a specific meaning and the symbols have a specific meaning. Plus, it's just a bit uh, more compact, so easier to read in uh, the whole page. So what I did was have my templates create the graphics uh, uh, code. Um, we'll have that discussion, Brian, uh, in a few minutes. But this is what uh, what I wound up with. Have my wiki, have my templates create uh, this code and push it to graphics. Well, it took me some issues. Uh, it took me some steps because I ran into the first issue. Uh, if you just use the graphics um, attack, uh, you can't use templates, you can't use functions in so inside of it. So that was easily uh, fixed with using the tag. There's a code error there. But then you run into uh, the extreme sensitive dot language of graph is. So you can't use line breaks in the wrong places or your code will just not work at all. Well, that's easily fixed, just be careful. But then I ran into this issue and 
it took me admittedly way too long to uh, discover that uh, in every result format, there's uh, an SMW, SMW off and SMW on uh, code that is hidden for the normal user. So I had to use uh, this code to strip SMW off out of the code because Graphis works on it. And then the last issue, the ID in, uh, in my graphs uh couldn't be the page name because page names can uh, contain spaces they can be too long uh, they can contain special characters so i'm using the page id um then uh the page id uh i, I got the page id from uh, the um uh, extra properties the semantic extra properties but uh, that has another issue. If a page has been renamed and you refer to the first page, you end up with two IDs, page IDs for the same page. So you have to work around that as well. Then the most important message here was use uh, debugging by uh, using the pre tag. Uh, that helped me a lot in getting exactly the code that I uh, was giving to uh, uh, to Graphis. So I could decode my dot language before I handed it over to Graphis. So um, yeah, that's basically it. I'm seeing some discussion already about uh, Mermaid versus uh, the Graphis extension and Kimco is right. Uh, the current graphics extension is unmaintained and uh, the mermaid extension well perhaps it could work but uh, for the uh, visualizations that i wanted uh, it didn't look like it was going to do uh, exactly what i wanted so um any questions <laughs> uh, because I can't code. No, but you can learn. <laughs> yeah, I can, but I won't. I, I know you can because Tuan did that also. <clears throat> mm. he, he, he studied uh, PHP and... Uh... He's an historian. He can't code. Well, he can code, but uh, <laughs> different priorities yet. <laughs> Yes, you do. <laughs> Sorry, it's one. <laughs> I'm sure I can. Yeah, how do, I, how do you do that? Yeah, the like, unlike. Okay. <laughs> if there are um, any, more, any more questions about uh, whether Twang can code or not, or about. about and also, program. if there's any. Um... Uh, hints or experiences in uh, making readable and uh, understandable templates. I'm all in for your advices and experiences. But I, I, I do want to, uh, is have is, is getting some uh, likes as well, because he says, we, we have the official new Graphis maintainer. When is the next release? It's, it's not that scary to, uh, to maintain an extension. So... Uh, yeah, great presentation. Jeffrey is right. Is there a question there as well? I did hear you and see your screen. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, uh, Jeffrey was in the uh, practice room or whatever you call it. Uh, but his mic was off. Yeah. Okay. So if there are, if we don't have any questions, we can uh, close it for the day and meet and meet in um, we have uh, if you go out of this session and go to the, re to the reception you will see a viennese uh, coffee room and then a hack room and uh, yeah, that's it eh? 
So what? So Bernard, I don't know what's special about the Viennese uh, coffee. Well, it's it's uh, the best coffee around, right? So. Ah, okay, that's it. <laughs> And uh, there's uh, there's nothing special uh, in the Viennese coffee house session. It's just a session that is not recorded, uh, as is the hex based session. So they don't differ anything other than the title. So you might want to hang out in the uh, in the coffee house or hex based session, or, or also in the speakers corner. There's also the same thing. But they are limited to to twenty seats, uh, meaning twenty people can be visible at a time. Uh, but this is a limitation of of hopping that we cannot uh, change. Yeah. So maybe see you there. Yeah, uh, I think that's a good idea to have a talk afterwards. And then uh, for the the European uh, guys, I I uh, wish a, a good night because it's already uh, in the evening, and the, and the and the rest of the world have, have a nice day and see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.